Welcome to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast, your number one source of all things bodybuilding. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future episodes. Now, here's your host, Leroy Rollins. Okay, let's uh, let's just dive right in, man. So maybe if if some of the people didn't see the first episode, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about where you were in prep when this kind of all started. I can't, what was that, about five, six weeks out, I think, maybe from my show? I think Somewhere four. Else, so. I think four sounds right. Four? All right. So I was uh, pretty much getting ready um, for a March 21st show, and as it kept getting closer, I was starting to think, that this might not happen. I ended up speaking, getting close to a friend of mine who's a WNBF pro out in Washington, Aaron Orton, who's a genuine bodybuilder, really, really good competitor, was probably going to have a really kick-ass season. Um, military guy, family guy, owns a gym, puts on a bodybuilding show as well. Yeah. He was getting ready for the show. So about six days before the show, you know, or two weeks before the show, we all saw that Arnold Classic basically got canceled. Like, they let the guys compete, all the guys, girls, all the athletes, but they shut the expo down. The city of Columbus, I think it's had lost about $55 million. Crazy. Which is like, I don't know if you've ever been to see Arnold. It's a blast. I went to the Olympia a few years ago, and it was unreal, so I can just imagine. And, like, Columbus, more so than the Olympia, just because the Olympia is Vegas, and they so rah, rah, rah all the time. Yeah. But they... Is there not? They're going to make their money, but Columbus really uses this time for local businesses, hotels, sure. and gyms, etc. Um, anyway, they cancel that, and then I see they start postponing other shows. And I think right around the time my show got canceled, all the other Arnolds for the year got canceled. And you know, there's someone who I know who's competing. He was going to compete in the pro show, and they're messaging me, and they're like, "Listen, we're still going to be able to do this. We'll just do it in a hotel or a gym." I'm like. I don't think you guys realize what's happening. Like down here in New York City, we're like the first person to start, first place to start really, yeah, in the West, rushed by this shit. And uh, they started. The numbers were like, you can't have two hundred people. Then one hundred fifty. Then it was down to fifty, and now it keeps dwindling down. And I pretty much told everybody that was prepping. I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm my last night of work, I was messaging you, I messaged Aaron Orton, I messaged my photographer. Yeah. My cops got fight, and I didn't get out till like four in the morning, and I didn't have time to eat, carb up, nothing. I had to go to this gym that didn't have heat that mm-hmm. I work out at. That was the only place around that was illegally open. I'm not going to give the name out if people want to research it. So I stayed open for like four days after my photo shoot. It was the only place open. Luckily, I got some pictures in. Not the best pictures, not my best, whatever. Man, some of those um, look dope, though. Like, you got some good ones, at least, right? I, I, no, I appreciate it. I, I still have more coming in. We took a ton that day. Um, but, man, doing a photo shoot, you have to be up for, like, 25 hours and not carving up. <laughs> not fun. By the end of it, I couldn't get a pump. Yeah. I was like, screw this. I just eat. Yeah. Like, you know, and I wasn't like that. Like, folk. I wasn't food focused. I wasn't. I was totally yeah. into prep. And then, you know, you I kept on doing um, people that were prepping and you were like, I'm going to keep on going, I'm going to keep on going. And I kept talking to some other people, yeah, I'm going to keep on going. I'm like, guys, listen, this isn't going away. It's only getting worse. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Here, here we are. Here um, we are. To sum it up, uh, you, know, you were crushing your prep just like many other people. I definitely what my best. I sent you a lot of pictures. Um, some other guys that maybe are in the industry, Brandon Lattice, Connor St. Jeannie, Joe Rich, Aaron Norton, and some guys, you know. And then when my prep was over, I had um, some people that I'd been in touch with, um, you know, Doug Miller, Alberto Nunez, who I actually got to meet up with and train. That is so um, sick. One, that was sick. Uh, the week before my show, I met up with a former detective, or he is a detective in the city, Juan Etienne, who actually placed in the Mr. Olympia a few years back, like 2010, in the 212s. Um, one team universe 2010 the last time it was a drug tested show yeah met up with him met with IFBB Vinny Galanti three weeks out so like going into the end of my prep I just knew it was I was definitely bringing my best um, and you know what the day after after I ate I actually 
to a bow, just like you said when you did the jump load. Yeah. That day after the fight, I had some huge Laban cookies from the city, um, two or three pounds of ground beef, a couple of Talenti ice creams, and the next morning, like, Boom. the glutes were just dug, dug out. So, um, here we are about two, 15, 16 days after that, up 15, 16 pounds, feel good, yep. eating a lot, and, um, no regrets, man. I feel like uh, anyone who's trying to still prep, it's um, more power to you because um, I don't know if there's going to be any show news this year, man, or at least not until this cools down. And that's, it's, they're saying it's going to peak in the United States till the mid end of April. So it's, yeah. it's scary, man. I don't know how it is up by you guys, but everyone's got the masks on down here, the gloves, food is like, the grocery store is a weird place. There's obviously no gyms. People are freaking out. Gym equipment is... I'm seeing iron plates for three, four dollars a pound. That's insane. It's crazy. Anyone who's paying that... Yeah, like, so up here, like in Ontario, Toronto, Ottawa, it's it's the hotbed in Canada for it. So I'm basically, like, right in the middle. So we're seeing it. I know it seems like every other day there's a new announcement, whether it's businesses closing or it's... I think now we're down to no gatherings over five people. Um, obviously, like you said, gyms are closed, grocery stores are nut houses and that kind of stuff. Exactly what you said with gym equipment. I'm trying to gather what I can right now to get it done. And it's ridiculous. You cannot find anything. Well, it's not just that you can't find anything. Like, or it's jacked I, up. I don't know about you. I, I live in a, in a house, um, and I have a 1200 square foot unfinished basement, but to get down, I don't have like a, um, sliding doors outside the way my house is. My neighbors across the street, everyone on that side of the street, they all have like outlets, walkouts from the basement. Mine doesn't, so everything needs to come down through my basement door. So I've got the space, which and the time and the funds, thank God, to put whatever I want down there, but just getting it down there. You cannot bring a leg downstairs. Like, it doesn't matter how many strong guys I get. And not, and I don't want five strong guys together right now, puffing and puffing, bringing a leg press down. So, yeah, yeah. Um, We'll figure it out, but um, so we're starting to put that together. But yeah, what crazy. do they do for schools up by you? Schools are shut just down. They, the schools were shut down until the end of March, but I think they just bumped that to the end of April. But I know in British Columbia, schools shut down until September. So I think it's just a matter yeah. of time. Uh, I think my, my mom, she's a uh, superintendent down in one of the towns here. My wife is a Spanish teacher in a neighboring county. And... Um, Luckily, not too many people have died in my county, but the county that my <laughs> wife teaches in, 42 people have died um, with this, and eight people in her specific town within the county. Um, you know, so I told my, like you, I told my wife, go up near Syracuse. Not Actually, it was, uh, your show was going to be in Utica. It was like right over there. I told you that last time we spoke, um, which is three and a half hours away, and they only have 60 confirmed cases and no death maybe one or two deaths at this time in that county. Right. But that was a week ago, man. So to, you know, I've got this big empty house mm -hmm. and no gym. And the worst part about it is my wife and son are three and a half hours away because yeah. I guess it just hits you two weeks after you get it or that's when you really start to show the symptoms. I don't, I don't have any symptoms. I haven't tested myself. I don't feel a need to test myself. But I also didn't want my wife and son exposed to the hotbed um my county has 500 confirmed cases and i'm an hour outside the city now in the city oh shit i think there's like oh my god i don't even know how many confirmed cases but they're getting like 250 to 300 deaths a day and for yes. people who don't know and you people who might be listening there's five boroughs there's queens which is number one and deaths um I don't even like saying the word. Um, then there's Brooklyn, then um, the Bronx, I think. Manhattan, which is where I work, is number four, and then Staten Island is last. Um, so I'm happy the borough that I work in is four out of five, so the chance of getting it are a little bit summer. But yeah. in the particular priest I work in on the upper west side of Manhattan, which is a very nice place to work, it's very expensive to live there. We spoke about before Lincoln Center is there, the Porter Central Park, the Beacon Theater. Seinfeld was filmed over there, and um, 
there's 26 cops in my precinct that are out sick, and I think six that have test, tested positive, and in the entire New York City Police Department, including civilian workers, you know, like cleaning people and um, people that help us with the paperwork, there's, I think, 1,600 people that have tested positive at this time, and there's been five deaths. Um, I haven't really kept track on other city workers. My uncle was an MTA worker, which he was a conductor for the train, so he like literally drove the New York City subway trains. And uh, he was 49, and he went into the hospital 12 days, or no, it was a Friday, so two weeks ago, and by the following Monday, he passed away. And wow. I don't even want to get into it, but um, 49 years old, had to die alone, and there's, and there's a lot of people that have to go through this. And that are going to be dying alone, and they're burying him today. And there's only about to be nine people there. Like it's just insane. There was a funeral in New Jersey um, a couple of days ago uh, for someone who passed with this COVID nineteen, and there were twenty people there, and seventeen people tested positive after that. Like it's really, really nuts, man. Like yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like most of us in the fitness world are sort of all over the place with this. And if you just look at the bigger picture, we're all on this together. No one is making gains in this period unless you have access to a private gym. Yeah. Um, whether you're a natural competitor or not, because I couldn't even imagine, dude. Could you imagine being on something right now and trying to figure that out? No, no, that's a whole other stress. What, you know. Um, so luckily I'm off to work till Wednesday. So I've waited about 14 to 15 days of having to commute into the city um, and deal with this. And hopefully it starts to wind down, man. I mean, I think the next week is going to be really bad. I, I see down south in the states, Louisiana, all the spring breakers from Bob. Yeah. Marty got a couple weeks ago, and then people go to Daytona and Panama Beach, Florida. It's getting crazy. Um I was talking to somebody, I can't remember who it was, maybe it was Alberto Nunez, and I said, oh, was, I messaged you yesterday too, I've said it to a bunch of people, no matter what you do for a living, whether you work at a bank, you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, cop, fireman, you work at Chipotle, all you want to do is be on your phone and like on your iPad and not doing work, it doesn't matter what you do for work, no how much you love it, and now that we're all stuck inside and that's all you can do, everyone's bitching a moment. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, it's, uh, this is like a big social, like I'm a huge, like besides fitness, bodybuilding, like psychology is like probably my next passion, I guess you could say. So like, this is super interesting to observe, not only like sure. myself and how I'm handling it, but just like everybody around and just seeing the different, you know, perspectives people are having and like how they're, like you said, how they're handling now when you have to actually not do anything. When normally people don't do anything, now they're freaking out. Like, it's so weird. It's such a weird, weird thing, like I said. And uh, I don't know if it's, you can only watch so much Netflix or TV or if people are just sort of also, maybe if no one was sick and no one was getting sick and the government was just doing some tests for you to stay inside, maybe people would feel differently. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. But I think people are definitely scared. This is unknown. And... Uh, it's affecting all ages, like all types of people are freaked out, whether it's freaked out from, you know, they just, they're bored. And I think that what's going to come out of this is, and if you, you know, like you said, if you're interested in psychology, a lot of people are going to gain a lot of weight. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to go through depression, divorces. There's going to be a lot of babies in about eight to nine months. <laughs> that and for sure. At least down towards us where it's going to affect um, there's been a lot of suicides already for people that have coronavirus, which, you know, I think is crazy because it's only killing 1% of people get it. So get it, your chances of surviving are so strong. It's not like a terminal cancer um, yeah. with mortality rate or even something, you know, like AIDS or HIV. It's not that horrible. It's very bad, but it's, you know, suicide, I'm not judging anyone or if anyone's listening that's had someone commit suicide because of this or in the past or whatever, but um, just, man, oh man, you know, it's, uh, 
you, you, I, th- I think more than enough people are going to be able to get through this, especially in the smaller areas where they could handle it. The biggest problem in the big cities is there's not enough room for the people. We have a floating hospital bed. Like, there's a giant Navy ship that came, and then in Central Park they set up, um, like, tents. And then wow. at the new Davit Center, which is, like, where they do the car show, Comic-Con, it's, like, this huge, really nice convention center in the city. They turn that into a hospital. So it's just a matter of having enough beds and enough places to, you know, take care of the people. And then enough staff. I mean, you can't have nurses, man, working 30, 40 hours when they're exposed to this. Like, this, you know, the same reason why I definitely called up my prep and put some weight on. Because you can't, and whether it's you, me, it doesn't really matter what you do. Like, you don't want to be at a low body fat and mentally not in a good place when yeah. there's a disease out there that's killing people. Like, yeah. you want the immune system to be a little stronger. So I'm super happy that you told me you started like reversing slash cutting your prep because it's good thing. Yeah, the plan is to do, so this weekend actually I'm going to do a photo shoot kind of similar to you. I actually, close to where I live, almost like this mountaintop. So we're going to go okay. there and I'm going to get some like really aesthetic like kind of classic shots. I screen saved a bunch of like Arnold and Frank Zane last night. So they'll be sweet. And what's kind well, of you're, nice, you're a good poser, man. And you have really good shots. Up. Yeah. So that'll be cool. And then the plan is to kind of hold like I'm 164 right now, which is like 10 to 15 away from stage. So I'll probably hold this maybe like a little bit heavier for the year. And then if something pops up like in the summer, I could be within shooting distance of it if I wanted to. But then the plan is to do basically the shows I was going to do this year. I'll do them next yep. spring. Yeah, good. You know, listen, man, that's a good idea. I think always staying leaner um, has, has, has never not served somebody well if you're going to be doing it back, back to back. Um, you know, it's tough. I mean, it's tough to prep as long as you did already. Then stay lean through all that's going on. Because your training is not going to be ideal, and you're going to have slip ups in your nutrition. But the nice thing is, is there isn't a show that you're doing in the next 12, 14 weeks, and you know it's it's a, it's a good little mental break, I guess. Yeah, the er- the earliest one would be uh, July thirty first. That would be the er- so I have lots of time. So if it gets canceled well in advance, then I is what it is. But if I get word ten weeks out that it's still running, then I can crunch down if I need to. I remember you saying you were thinking about trying to go all the way to November. I'm like, that was crazy to me. Like, to try worlds or whatever. When you think about it, like, dieting for like nine or ten months, it's, I, I couldn't even, towards the end, I was, even with the show, I was like, man, I don't even know if I can go past eight, but not due to coronavirus, just because I'm so lean at work was just, besides the fact, crime is up in New York City, so I'm just exhausted. So I was like, there was a small part of me that was happy when this got canceled because I, I don't think I could have died until May, May 9th or even possibly the show you were going to do was in the, a small part of me was in my head and I'm like, yeah. So, you sometimes just get to a point when you get so lean and you're not used to it. You know, some of these guys that compete every year um, or year round for like long periods of time, I guess they just get used to it. Or, yeah, know, I guess. Or they're, you know, maybe it's just their jobs are a little different than mine or the family situation, whatever. But uh, that lasts like two to three weeks. What a, what a mind fuck. <laughs> <Right? laughs> and that's, people, don't, people don't understand that, right? Until you're actually at that level. Like I've had seasons where I've had, I remember it was 2017, I competed. So I, okay, get this. This is disgusting, but I'm not, I'm not ashamed of it. So I had competed in May of 2017. So I started prep in January, lost like 30 pounds. And then that show qualified me for a show in Spain that like we had like a team Canada go. So I gained my weight back, gained all 30 pounds from like May to like July and then lost it all again for that November. So in 2017, I went from you know, like buck 80 down to a buck 50 back up to a buck 80. Crazy. You must have felt like shit that second half of the prep or that second prep. Of the year. It was rough. That was tough one. It was rough. 
And I don't want to do that again. Like this this year, I was up to one ninety two, and then I'm down like one sixty four. So I figured, okay, if I can start the next prep for next year at like one seventy five, then I won't have to die as hard. Well, you're ahead of it. Yeah, I mean, I started. I usually hang around like one ninety nine, two hundred, and then I sort of started thinking about competing after I saw. Brett Freeman and Sam Okonola start competing like throughout the summer. I was like, ah, you know what, I'll start taking my training just a little bit more serious, my nutrition a little more seriously. And then I started my prep two weeks, like around two weeks before the Worlds, around 195. And my lowest weight was 169. So I lost like 26, 27 pounds. Um, And then by the time I went to the photo shoot, I was back up to like 172, 173. And then I would say peaked at like 175-ish. So 20 pounds in like 20 weeks. Um, I guess it doesn't sound like that bad of a prep, but it really wasn't. But I think when you, like what I'm saying is you said you need to get 155, 156. So if you're going to be like 175, 176, you'll be in a good, a really a much better spot. And definitely build, build the calorie back up. And your training should be like ideal in that period because I always feel like there's a sweet spot in yeah. your training. Like I feel like sometimes when you're in your off season, you're fat, <laughs> you just don't look good. Yeah. You go to the gym, you don't, you know, you, and, and eventually you get to a point where you're not even getting a good pump anymore because you're too big. Yeah. And then like when you're so shredded, you can't get a pump either. So like there's yeah, that man. middle ground where I guess it's like between 12 and 23 pounds over, I would say, which is like the sweet spot. You look good at tank tops, you feel good. Yeah. Yeah, like right now, like, right now I don't feel that bad. I really don't. And when I train, like I'm vascular, I look good. Like you said, yep. I'm kind of like that nice beach lean. That's why I was like, okay, if I'm not going to compete, I'll at least go get some photos done. Because even like the old school photos, they're not shredded. You know what I mean? Like back in the 90s, they didn't get as peeled. So I feel like my conditioning right now is comparable to the photos I'm going to take. Yeah, and if you get some stuff done in black and white, it just oh. comes out. You know, absolutely awesome. Yeah. So now you're doing the doing the right thing, man. Um, what was I gonna say? What do you think the rest of the? I mean, maybe you speak to more people. Like I said you have a much bigger following than me, and you're you're more involved in the industry, I guess, so to speak. What has been your take on what everyone else is doing? Not that it affects you or me. I'm just curious to kill some time. And since we're doing this, what are other people doing? What are other people thinking? What are the federations? Because I have people that are like, come do an online show with your application, and I understand you want to try to take care of people that are competing, but that's not how you want to win a pro card. They don't want to win a pro card virtually posing. That's no. I'm sorry. Just not it. Yeah, like, I know, like, for me, like, last week, I was like, okay, I don't care. Like, this, my goal this year was WMBF pro card. That was all I wanted. That was all I was focused on. So when it came to the May show not going through, then everything else, other shows, weren't going to get me that. So that's what kind of fueled me being like, okay, what's the point then? Because even if I compete, even if I compete elsewhere, I'm not going to get what I want. So I know the CPA, the Canadian Physique Alliance, which is like under the IFBB, they've canceled all shows up until June. They just yesterday canceled the Toronto Pro. Um but a couple of shows have been postponed with like the game plan, hopefully being like August, September ish. Um, I think it's a little bit. canceled. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's just it. Um, so like for me with clients, it's really, really tricky right now. Like I've, I had clients that were, I guess two weeks ago. Now the show was April 18th. They were four weeks out and the show got canceled. And I said, okay, we're going to do, basically what I'm doing now is come out of the diet, let's recover a little bit, but we're not going to get fat, we're going to creep calories up, pull cardio back, and just kind of coast, and then if something pops up in the fall, we're within shooting distance of a six-week cleanup, and they are all for that. I have a few clients right now that there's a show in June that hasn't been canceled yet, but the conversation will be had when they all check in tomorrow of like, okay... If it gets canceled, this is the game plan. Um, you know, with, with man, you're just crazy. Well, I'm sure you have really, really good clients, but uh, you know, I, I know people that used to coach people, and then they went to Gen Pop. They're like, it's just better because there's just sometimes no speaking to people. Like, 
how to get so super focused. Uh, put more power to you, man. And I'm sure not everyone's sitting around. You're getting a lot more messages. And what am I supposed to do with this and this? And there's no gym. And, oh, man, I don't, I don't envy you. <laughs> I think it was not last weekend, but the weekend before. And I had, I had posted about this, like, between – the Friday, because clients typically check in for shows either Fridays or Saturdays, so those two days are more busy on my phone. But between the shows getting canceled, the gyms getting closed, like I, man, I easily spent like from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like I was on my computer or phone for like 30 hours. It felt like it was just message after message, question after question. How do I do this? I have this equipment at home. What do I do? I don't have any equipment. What do I do? What are we doing with that? Like, and I was just like, I almost was like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to explode because then I'm trying to figure out for myself what the heck I'm going to do. And it was just like, it was so much and it was just, it was a lot. It was very overwhelming. But th- like, thankfully, most of my clients, we have a very good relationship beyond like coach client. Like they know, they know who my fiance is. They know I have a dog. I know that they have a brother who's in you know, art school, like we have that kind of relationship. So everybody was super understanding, like, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I've got a lot on my plate right now. Um, and it will make the most of it. But I think it's just the biggest thing everybody's freaked out about is the uncertainty of it all. Um, on top of our niche of bodybuilding, like so many people aren't working. I told a bunch of clients, like, thankfully, I work full time. And then coach. So coaching is right. my sole income. But I told people, I was like, look, you can't pay me this month. Because it's April, April 1st. was today? Today's the 3rd. So yeah, yeah, April 1st. Like payments were due. And I was like, just be honest. Like I'll, I'll keep working with you. But just be honest that you can't afford it. Because I get it. Like a couple people have now been out of work for, yeah. for nearly a month, right? In the United States, unemployment is over 10 million people. And they just did that three tri- – trillion dollar uh, stimulus check so they're sending I guess if you earn X Y or Z um, you know you will get a $1,200 stimulus check and then $500 per child Um, so when I originally saw that I was like oh shit I'm gonna take the $1,200 and I'm gonna trick the rest of my gym out right and I'm like oh 500 for my son um all right, well, he'll be able to use this in the gym in a few years, and just joking aside, and then they said it's not going to everybody. You have to make under a certain... So neither me or my wife are getting this, this stimulus check, and uh, I was like, all right, well, that's sort of bummer, but at the same time, I was like, you know what? Very, very happy that my wife both work professions that we get paid bi-weekly, and that this is not affecting us. We are still getting paid, yep. and eventually, once the city gets bad enough with enough sick cops, they're going to put us on the 12-hour tours, which they've been speaking about for like a month now. And then that will end up producing somewhere between 40 and 60 hours of overtime a month for, for us, for me, which is better than a stimulus. I'd rather that money go somewhere. I'm not selfish. I'm not trying to come off as like a prick or anything like that. There's people who really need this to pay their bills. They're suspending mortgages. Oh, man, rent, it's nuts. Uh, credit cards. Like, it's dude. <laughs> You, you'll never see this shit again. Like, no. We're going to read about this history books. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, this is like this, the Spanish flu of 1918. Like, it's... Like you'll, just, you'll tell your kid about this. Well, yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, my dad was in the city and he worked through 9-11. Luckily, he was not affected. He wasn't down at ground zero but like, the long, long hours. And then my driver at work, he was telling me about when Hurricane Sandy came and destroyed New York City and Long Island. And they were working 12, 13, 14 hour days wearing big boots because there's water up there in me. So there's certain times like this, but um, the civil servants, that's one of the benefits, it usually works out for you because your, your paycheck's pretty steady. Like my wife, she's doing online, they're trying to figure out like online teaching right now. And um, But she's also taking care of our son, which is a huge uh, you know, financial uh Burden for some people, so she's at home at her parents' house, and they're all happy, jolly, watching TV and taking care of my son. So uh, yeah. I'm very, very fortunate. Uh, I, like I said, I, I keep trying to tell people, and I post a few different videos on Instagram. That you really need to look at the big picture with this, and try to look at the the bright side for anyone who is getting paid right now, or you know, is having their rent mortgage forgiven, and they are or they had money in the bank and whatever. 
do that. Me and my wife are thinking about refinancing our house right now because the rates have dropped so much because people aren't going to be able to pay their mortgages. So that'll take some, you know, refinance a house. You got to pay to refinance it, but it saves you a lot of money in the long run. So that's good. I'm still waiting for the stock market to crash even more mm -hmm. and then throw some money in there. Like, I think people just need to look at benefits if they have expendable income or whatnot. And uh, even when this is all done, you're still going to be able to help people out because electricians are out of business, plumbers are out of business. And even if they're not right now, you don't want them in their house. God forbid they have the disease where you have the disease. So when this is all said, these people are going to be looking for work. So you might be able to get some stuff done. Like I said, you really need to try to be positive this, during this time because otherwise the, the news wants to make Things like gloomy and yeah. that's what they want. They want yeah, to scare yeah. people. They don't report anything good um, no. usually. Um, you know, and they, that goes for everything. Like you watch any of the YouTube channels of bodybuilding news. Like when poor Dallas McCarver, Rich Piana died, all these channels couldn't wait to report that. Like, come on, gotta get like, the views. You know, no, it's no. just this this type of world we live in. It's just crazy, man. But uh, I think you know, for most part, everyone's going to be okay through this. And like I told you, we're all in the same boat. No one's making gains. And I think that bodybuilding, whether it's IFBB, all these different natural federations, I think everyone should just call it wash. Just everyone focus on being actually healthy and enjoying this time with their family because there's so much uncertainty. There's so much stuff. Promoters, the, everything, they should, I think, I think it should be a wash for the year. I know you don't want to hear that. Your clients don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't. But I, I, I just think it's better off. People take competing out of their mind and focus on what's really important. And at the end of the day, listen, competing, you want your WMB profile. I wanted a couple of different pro cards. It seems like what's most important, but your health, your business, your finances, that's important. At oh, 100%. And like, it's always going to be there. This, yeah, the stage will always be there. And I think that takes, uh, you know, a, a bit of maturity as an athlete to understand. Um, I would say up until a few days ago, I was really struggling with swallowing that pill just because I was like so locked into what I was trying to do this year but at the end of the day it's not the right time and I have to recognize that it's probably not the right time for multiple different reasons um and we'll just yeah. we'll just get better yeah, next year picture that maybe you're not supposed to compete maybe you know whatever I, I don't know you know you maybe know, I was just, gonna cross it, the border and get hit by a truck who knows dude <laughs> well I'll tell you something that was uh People don't realize how tough this is. It doesn't matter what stage of prep you're in. And you were in the stage of prep, I think, where you weren't shredded inside out yet, but you were so, your clothes are starting to feel baggy, your strength is probably starting to go down. So it's like that mind fuckery, like part of prep, I would say, that like yeah. seven, uh, ten weeks out. And I was like right there, um, you know, ready to compete. And I had one of my lieutenants at work say, oh, uh, so what are you going to do now that your beauty pageant's canceled? I was like, uh, I don't think you realize like how much shit went into this. Like, I don't, I don't think that people on the outside of this realize what it is to like really cool up a prep. It's uh, and that's and that's man. the thing, right? That, I think that's the hard part. Like, you ask anybody who gets to that level, the effort that went into that 20, 30 week prep, like that's mm -hmm. where it's so hard. It's not just the fact that you can't get on stage. It's the fact that every workout, every cardio, every gram of food that I weighed it was all measured and accurate no ifs ands or buts about it and then boom nope sorry and, not, not this year and everyone and I had a lot of people at work and then even some other competitors tell me they're like oh don't you think you can just like, keep grinding it out so this is over I'm like what no. if this doesn't end till August like as a natural natural or non-natural you cannot it doesn't matter how good your genetics are you cannot just, once you have striated glutes, like, you could dig and dig and dig, but once you're at that point, in my opinion, it's very tough mentally and physically to hold. Like, I think yeah. there's, like, four to six weeks you could hold it. You can't, you know, unless you, like, reverse and you're mentally really, really strong, got nothing going on, but to try to do that during this period, yeah. like, where gyms are, are you crazy? In a perfect world, perfect circumstances, it's tough to maintain that for four to six weeks, yet alone where they're limiting how much chicken you could buy at a grocery store. And that, that's and it's all those other factors that are weighing on people as well, right? Like it's not just, you're right, like prep's hard enough as it is when everything's going well, but now people are struggling to have decent workouts. People are struggling to get food that they need. Like that's the staples of prep. 
I mean, I'm thankful you can see it behind me. I have a treadmill, so cardio is not an issue. But, but like, I have clients that are like, yeah, like I just walk around the block, and it's like not the be- like it's not the greatest. Like you're not going to burn as many calories, or if you're going to have to walk for three hours a day, like it's just there's a lot of things that we're kind of starting to get in the way of being getting on the other side of a prep and being like, okay, I'm proud of what I built. Like, you know, as a natural, you're going to start burning through muscle, especially if you're not training as hard. Like it's just going to start to not result in anything good. No, I, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm happy that you were going to get your photo shoot in and you're going to go from there. Um, I think too, you know, a lot of people have downtime now. I would love for you to keep, going back to maybe some people you interviewed in the past and sort of do this again and see where they're at with this and see what their thoughts are because everyone's got nothing but time to listen, nothing but time to talk. Yeah. And I feel like doing this is like really spot on right now. Yeah, just get some so, of that insight for sure. You know, um, hopefully once this is all said and done, either you, you could come here, we could, uh, you know, get some good eating in, some good training in. Um, I, you know, still haven't had, I still haven't had pizza, bro. Yeah, no, listen, pizza, ice cream, cookies, all that. I, I've <laughs> never, uh, I've never, other than to Niagara Falls side of Canada, I've never been up that way at all. So maybe that'll be a, uh, a summer fall type thing, you know, yeah. see Toronto and that stuff, and we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. Yeah, brother, sounds good to me. Um, any closing words? I'm going to get ready to go to work here soon. So any last, last thoughts we need to uh, share with the pops? <laughs> I want everyone to just try to stay healthy and safe. And if it's not affecting your town or city yet, I don't want to be like this bear of bad news, but there's a good chance it's it's going to. Not to the extent where it's affecting where I'm at, but it, uh, this is real. When it first started, I was joking about it. All I see is people with the mask, the gloves, the hand sanitizer, overdoing it. But those are people who are still probably healthy and doing well right now, I hope. And um, any competitors, just like I said, big picture and just be positive because that's what's going to get you through this, you know, and, uh, you know, even if you are home and you're snacking and you're eating, you know, that's, so that's okay too. It's, uh, <laughs> if you're not in an, if you're not in a competition phase, you know, yeah. you unfortunately don't know when your last meal is going to be. Um, uh, my uncle didn't know he was, you know, going to pass away. That happened all very quick. And, uh, you know, my dad told me that when I was starting to reverse diet. He's like, Jared, listen, you're a sergeant in the city. You're affected by this. He's like, you really want your last meal, God forbid, to be like cauliflower and chicken. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? You're 100% right. So, you know, I'm not being, like I said, doomy and gloomy or pessimist or negative or overdramatic, but he, he was right about that. So now, you know, 4,500 calories a day, 15 pounds up in 15 days. Man's eating good. Real good. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's, it's and, and you know, man, when you're, when you eat, to that point, I'm not binging. It's a lot of food, um, but it's where I am usually in the off season. Food for 4,500 is um, you release the good endorphins. You feel good. You're happy. And, uh, you don't want to be too. You, you know, you got to try to. Like I said, positive, positive, positive. So that's my uh, that's my closing words. Like I said, and uh, this is all said and done. Any of the guys that listen, or you know, that are in the New York, Canada, five hour window, maybe we can do some type of uh, meathead meetup. Uh, yeah, man. Maybe in the fourth. Oh, great. So, Sounds good. All right, All right man. man. I appreciate right, you brother. coming on again. I appreciate everybody from listening. Hopefully you gained some a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of insight from this and how uh, how me and this guy are getting yeah. through everything because it's not easy. Uh, regardless of if you're, you're like, if you're like Jared with a family, it's not easy. If you're like me, just you know, calling off a prep, it's not easy. It's you know, we're all we're all in this in some form or another. Yeah. So uh, thanks again everybody yeah, for watching. Yeah. And guys, listen, the, listen, the little last final words is if you do need someone to speak to, trust me, either one of us will listen to you. Message us on Instagram, whatever. Um, if you feel like you're depressed, you need to talk, we will listen to you. We can help you through this. So yeah. that's that, guys. Cool. Stay positive, and we'll do this again. All right, man. Have a good one, Mike. All right, take it easy.